Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a fillable form with all its formatting protected. So let's get started. OK, so once we've filled out the basic information in our fillable form, we want to insert the different fields that we'll need for our user to insert some text. There are a couple of different fields, and I've set up this so that I can demonstrate all three of them at the moment. Those are the basic ones. So the first thing you need to do is ensure that you have the developer tab in your ribbon. Now, if you don't have that, if you scroll through to the end of this video, there's a short video that shows you how to put it in both a Mac and a PC. So the first thing we want to do is add a title field to this cell here. And for this one, I'm going to use a drop down menu to allow people just to select from the different options. So I'll place my cursor in that cell, make sure I'm on the developer tab. And I'm going to go along to this one called Combo Box. Now, once I click on that, you can see this grey shaded box appears. If I double click on it, then you can see this dialog box appears. So what you want to do in this section here is input all the different options you want on your drop down menu. But the first thing that you should put in is the title and what you'd like to appear in this when you send your document. So if you just click on here, I'm going to insert title and then just hit enter. And then I'm going to put in Mr, Mrs, press enter, Miss, and then just MS, press enter. And then I'm going to go down to the field settings and I'm just going to title this box title again. And then I'm just going to click OK. Now, this is how it will appear when your user uses the form. And the way in which this works is once you go up and protect your form by clicking on this padlock, you'll see there's a drop down arrow that appears. If you click on it, then all your different options will appear here and your user will just simply click on the one that they want. So we'll just go up, rename that title and unprotect um, the editing. And then we'll go ahead and select one for this section here. Now we just want some ABC text in here. So again, in the developer tab, we go along to the text box. And again, we have our gray text box, which appears. Double click inside. And once again, we have this dialog box. This is where you can make several changes to this box. And once you've done that, you can simply copy and paste it to other areas of your document. So at the moment, I just want regular text. But as you can see, you've got a number of different options here. You can also set the amount of text or characters that you want. So if you click the up and down arrow, then it can limit the amount of characters that you're allowed to insert in that box. Then you have your text format, whether you want uppercase, lowercase, and I'll just go for title case here. And then you've got macro options here and also field settings. Fill in is enabled. If you want it calculated when exiting, if you've got some form of calculation to go on, then you can do that. And then you just click OK. And once you've got that set up, then just highlight that text box and then use the command or control C key to copy and then go down to the area where you want this text box to appear again and then just press command or control V. And again in the address box I want exactly the same so I'm just going to move my cursor down to where I want the address to begin and then just click command or control V. And then again if we click on the protect form icon you can see that if I click in this box here, then it will just type that text. Now, my user, if they try to click on the title here, or let's say the first name here, and they type, it won't type in this section here because it's protected. It will just automatically default to the grey box. And then again in here, of course, it will do exactly the same. Now, the third type of box and I'll show you how to put it in there here as well, is your checkbox. So at the moment, we can put a checkbox just against a line of text, and then I'm going to show you how to insert it into a table. So if you put your cursor next to the end of the text where you want it to appear, I want my checkbox to appear next to the yes and the no. 
Now, as you can see in the introduction, what I did was use text boxes to insert these yes or no answers so that I could line them up. It gives me a lot more flexibility that way. And then all I do is press my space bar. Sorry, go back to unprotect the form. Now, all I'm going to do now is grab my cursor. I've put enough space bars along here to just click where my cursor needs to be. But if your cursor is over here, then just hit the space bar to move that cursor over. Now, you need to put your checkbox outside this text box if you're using the same technique because your user, if they click anywhere near this yes, they will highlight this box and not the checkbox that will be sat next to it. So you do need to keep a little bit of space because at the moment, if I make that any smaller, then obviously it's going to lose the S. Now you can go in and format this and format the margins and make it a lot smaller, but at the moment, just for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just move the checkbox a little bit further to the right. So I have my cursor here, I go up to the developer tab and I select checkbox. And again, you can double click on the checkbox and alter some of the settings. So you can choose whether it's ticked or not ticked by default. And of course we want it not ticked to allow the user to go in and check it. And then we can also adjust the size. So let's say for example, we wanted to reduce the size and we to reduce it to nine. And then everything else can stay as it is and then just click OK. Once I've done that, I need to copy and paste it because we've obviously adjusted the formatting. So I'm just gonna hit the Command or Control C to copy it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that my next box is not within this text box here. So I'm going to move my cursor to about here and then Command or Control V. Again, I'm gonna do the same here. Command or Control V and again here just move that cursor along, Command or Control V. And again, if we go up to the Protect Form Padlock and just click on it, when your user goes in, click on the checkbox, you can see now that it will actually put a cross in those checkboxes. And if you do it again, then those crosses will disappear. In the same way, you can go into these uh, cells here of this table so we go back up to protect form and just unlock it so that we can then put those checkboxes within this table. So I'm going to format these cells already so we don't have to keep moving them to the center. So I'm just gonna highlight these two columns, go up to table layout, and then in this section here, I want my checkboxes to land right in the center of those cells. So I'm just gonna click this icon here. And then starting with the first cell, because I've again formatted this checkbox, I can either go back and press Command or Control C, or I can right click and use the copy and paste. Once I've done that, just go to my first cell and hit Command or Control V, or right click and paste. And then once again, if we go back up to the Developer tab, hit the Protect Form padlock, Okay, so I just quickly forgot to put in the yes or no answer at the top of my table. Once you've locked your form, you can see that your user can go in again and just click yes or no to each of the different questions. If you want to delete one of these uh, checkboxes or one of these fields, all you have to do is just simply highlight them, but you have to make sure that you've unlocked your uh, formatting and then just go back in, highlight the element that you want to delete and simply press the delete key. Once you're finished and you're happy, if you want to take out these grey shaded boxes and still allow the user to only be able to type in those areas, then just go up to the shading tab within the developer module and click and you'll see that all the shading is removed. Then go ahead and protect your form again. So when your user types anywhere, around the vicinity, then it will default and make sure they type within the fields that you've suggested. Again, you can go in and check all the boxes as well. Once you're happy and you've completed everything, you can go ahead and save this as a template if you wish. And if you want to know how to do that, I'll link a video in the description below. If not, 
You can go ahead and just save this, send it along to your user. He'll be able to input all of their information and send it back to you. Additionally, if you want your user to be able to sign a document or you want to be able to sign a document digitally, then there's another video in the link below that will be able to show you how to do that. I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day. I'm going to demonstrate how to show the developer tab in your ribbon of your Word software. I'm going to show you both for a Mac and a PC. So first of all, how to do it on a Mac. So I'm going to go up to the Word icon and go down to Preferences. Once I'm in Preferences, you'll see this dialog box. In the top section, go to Ribbon and Toolbar. Another dialog box will appear, and if you go to the right-hand side here and scroll down, you can see at the bottom you've got the Developer tab here. If you check this box and then go ahead and save and close this dialog box down and you can now see we have the developer tab in the toolbar with the ribbon below and all the subsequent tools. Okay so here we are in the PC version and here we need to go up to the file tab, go down to options and then go to Customize Ribbon. Again, you'll see a similar dialog box to that of the Mac version. And in this right-hand section, again, you can see Developer, and you need to check the box. Then go down and click OK. And as you can see, once again, we've got the Developer in the tabs with the ribbon and subsequent tools.